fossils and fish. And then the James Spiney priority area and Lona Blogford priority, and those two are spe specified by the actual species because we work specifically to, to uh, restore habitat for those species. Um, James in the upper James, not surprisingly, and the Roanoke log perch in the upper Roanoke. And this is just a, di a diagram showing our, where we work in case you don't have the, can't figure out where that is. This is the upper Tennessee drainage, Holston and Clinton Powell. This is the upper Roanoke. This is the James <coughs> Spiny Mussel area. And this is uh, Blackwater Not Oasis. So the other ones are, are programs, um, areas, focuses for others. Programs like the Endangered Species Program. <clears throat> so we're going to focus on the barrier removal for these uh, species, and uh, for left is a, a collection of listed mussels, uh, freshwater mussels. In case you're not familiar with them, are just amazing. Even though they don't look amazing, they're pretty amazing in terms of their life cycle. Um, a lot of them have um, larval stages that um, they have. They use resident fish to transport uh, to uh, establish new populations or reestablish other populations. And they do that by, they have uh, modified mantles, uh, if you've sort of seen like, uh, something sticking out of a clam or muscle like this, it's not the foot, um, it's, it's the mantle, they use it for filter feeding but um, uh, with their gills, but um, it, when it's exposed, they actually, they look like Crayfish, they, they evolutionary modified, adapted, so they look like crayfish or resident fish, even with coloration. And there's some great video on that online. And they attract the fish who think it's something to eat. When they come down, they eat it. They either, sometimes they'll grab them with their shell, with their valves, and hold on to them, or they'll actually eject these glochidia um, into them and they attach their to their gills, and that, that's part of their life cycle, it's life stage, and then they drop off down, you know, when they develop into, into little muscles. So, fascinating life cycle. The problem is they they require resident fish for moving around, and they require good water quality. And, and as you can imagine, Upper Tennessee, um, you've heard of uh, Tennessee Valley Authority and all the dams they put in. Um, not just them. There are dams. There's flood control dams. There's a lot of dams. They break up their habitat. They keep resident fish from moving back and forth. So if a population is extirpated, they can't recolonize. So it's been a big problem for them. Um, again, there's yellowfin matatom is another totally listed uh, major fish. Uh, Lone of log perch out the bottom, and that James spiny muscle and here's the spine. They don't always have it, but that's it's just a good example. It's a good example of that James spiny. So those are some of the species we focus on. And just to give you a scope of the problem, dams, <clears throat> these aren't all the dams, but this is a, 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 an idea of some of the major and, and moderate sized dams in, in Virginia. Um, there's still dams that they haven't, I, you know, they haven't actually put on that map. Um, these are just a prioritization tool. Uh, there's a number of them out there. This is when you include crossings, like road crossings that may be impediments. So, um, can't see the state really, but it's in there, along with West Virginia and Maryland. <clears throat> uh, and then the problem is analyzing whether there are impediments or not, because a lot of culverted crossings are impediments. But there hasn't been that much work done on it. I think BDOT may have done some work, but um, they're using a protocol now to try to uh, standardize it to get an idea of whether it's an impediment or not, how much of an impediment. Um, and so far, they've done that. So, we have a long way to go. <laughs> um, so, first you have to know if it's an impediment before you think you're going to do something about it, and then everything else follows from that. But, um, and it's not surprising, these are really an you know, migratory fish uh, issues of uh, uh, impediments um, across. The <laughs> and these are, a lot of these are eastern brook trout, because that's another focus for not our program in Virginia, but um, for some of the fisheries folks and, and the Fish and Wildlife Service in the lower part on the, on the point down here in Southwest Virginia is where some have done for resident fish, for fish and mussels. 
that are listed. And so one of the benefits, I think, the Venus are obviously species. You can reattach, you reconnect habitat, you provide uh, gene, uh, genetic exchange between populations that are disconnected. Um, <clears throat> but it also there's other improvements, uh, channel stability, uh, where you're actually taking those impediments out and the channel then can start readjusting to what it normally would have been before the impediment was put in. Uh, lowering flood elevations in terms of dams of significance. Um, removal of a hazard. Low head dams are notoriously bad at creating hydraulics below the dam that catch and drown swimmers, fishermen, kayakers. Um, and infrastructure protection in terms of not uh, protecting against if a dam blows out, especially a large one, the infrastructure downstream, uh, as well as increasing recreation potential because you remove that hazard and, and that people can go in and, and fish it safely or kayak it safely. <clears throat> this is just a, this isn't even a complete list of the listed species in the Upper Tennessee River. Um, uh, there will be a quiz on the names and uh, uh, the scientific names afterwards. Uh, but it mostly, it's mostly, these are mostly freshwater mussels. Um, there's some really interesting names, like purple bean, and crackling curly mussel, and Appalachian monkey face. But, and there's also a, a number of fish. Um, and again, they're, they're related. <laughs> like most things in, 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 uh, in the ecosystem, they're, they're, start pulling things out, then uh, although Leopold said, you know, you start monkeying around and taking, you got to you got to save all the parts. If you don't, you have problems later. So this is just going through a quick review of some of the projects we've worked on over uh, a number of years on um, aquatic connectivity. This one's in uh, Marion, Virginia, and it was called the Ice Plant Dam because it was an ice plant. They used to use it to uh, collect water to create uh, produce ice. The funk. Uh, and uh, it had some uh, breaches, but not significant, and uh, so it was slated for removal. They all have pools of varying sizes upstream, which are not suitable habitat for the fish or the mussels, uh, as well as collect sediment, but mainly it's water quality and just uh, and water movement. They need movement to bring food in and uh, to also to clean them off so that they don't get covered in sediment. So they removed it. Um, six years ago. Uh, it was a pretty simple one. A lot of these low head dams are, and this was relatively low head dam, but were pretty quick to remove. It's all the work you got to do to get to the point where you can remove it, permitting and everything else. This is listed species of water, so biological opinions that we have to uh, work with our, our staff, our community staff to, to write and um, kind of your restrictions, all that. But this is pretty simple removal once you can do it, but and then you can't see it, but behind these guys, it went almost straight up to a railroad embankment uh, and, and track, and we had to get permission to cross the railroad track to actually access some of the uh, area to get to work, and it's notoriously difficult because they don't like people crossing their tracks, and there was a lot of coordination for that. That's just one of the end. The site access is a big one with some of our projects because either it's built up after, after, after when they after they built this, the infrastructure kind of prevents you from getting to it, or uh, it's difficult to get to it with the infrastructure in terms of just permissions to get there. And that's what it looked like shortly after uh, the dam was taken out, and you can see there's. So we started to create uh, riffle habitat, uh, which is one of the preferred habitats um, for the mussels and the fish. Uh, another one is a, and it looks like a dam, but it's actually a sewer line in, in downtown Norfolk. And they encased it in concrete. It's raised above the grade, so it, it acts as a low head dam. Um, and Roanoke log perch are in this river, but they can't move upstream, and the habitat upstream, right past the dam, is not suitable for them. Uh, it's suitable for larger predators that like to eat them. So, um, 
So we worked with the city of Roanoke. It was a little difficult because it was a defunct sewer line, but they wanted to keep the sewer line in place, not in, necessarily in place here. They wanted to have a sewer line functional that they could use if they needed to. So there was a lot of back and forth negotiation. And, um, we finally were able to do that uh, and reroute it. Um, and And that's what it looked like afterwards. It, it was a big riffle complex, uh, and one of love which are, are there. So uh, that's that's part of that sewer line, the new sewer line on the other side that uh, you see. Um, and they tore down a bunch of old houses on the other side as well. This is one in uh, town of Rocky Mount. You know where that is in Franklin County. You may not, but uh, Franklin County. The Moonshine Capital of Virginia. They had a movie about it not too long ago. But this was a water supply dam. And it was the main supply dam for the town of Rocky Mount for quite a while. And but it was no longer used. Uh, the town put their supply line at another dam, an adjacent river, Blackwater River. And this little piece of there's another access thing, but uh, issue. But it's a little piece of land that that. And it contained a plant that pumped the water out, and that was torn down, and it became a used auto parts dump. <laughs> and the town bought them out because every flood, car parts, tires, everything else would be going downstream, and people complaining. So, um, so they, they they bought it, and then they built a veterans park on top of it, a small little pocket park, which. They didn't quite do all the geotech work necessary in that because they have some issues. But, um, but because it was partly filled, there were problems with that that site. Um, it low head dam. It's actually six feet deep below the dam. It, it's only a foot or so above because of this sediment load. Now this is primarily like the last one, primarily cobble gravel with the fair, you know some sand. People would fish right on that um, platform there, which was a big liability because there's a nice hydraulic below it. Um, and but there were log bridges downstream of it, which is not unusual. That the best, cleanest area is right below a dam because it's capturing material. Um, it's sediment starved, really, is what it is, uh, which is not a good thing. And you can see where they've actually added onto it, trying to keep it from cutting around. Over and that's pretty typical of dams and um, Road crossings, culvert crossings. Uh, you can see it's also got a sediment load in that river, <laughs> and it's land use upstream, a lot of ag. And, uh, so this is what the pool looks like above it. It was about a mile long, because it's relatively flat topography in that section of the river. Um, it's um, concerning the size of the dam. You wouldn't think it'd be that long, but it is. Um, they they had a sign right above it and a takeout right above it at a little park because. Again, it's a low-head dam, and it was a big liability for the, the county. In fact, they had two kayakers die at the Blackwater River um, mm. dam that they're using, currently using. So that was, unfortunately, with dams is the case, one of the big uh, drivers for removal uh, is uh, a death of one or more people, either at that dam or uh, a nearby one. In fact, when I was out looking at this dam to, for removal, um, and they posted another uh, a sign that said stay away because we didn't want people drowning. Um, I met the insurance uh, company uh, rep that was uh, looking at it to see what was going on with this because they were looking at it in terms of you know, greater liability. So it didn't get helped. But the other one of the other things is you know bank stability. Now, part of this is because they filled it, but also um, it's not uncommon to have a lot of uh, bank stress right below a dam where it's carving the um, soil out and uh, going downstream. <clears throat> and this is an example of it. Now, when we dug into this, we found all sorts of interesting stuff because of the old auto parts, um, used auto parts place. So we got a lot of interesting uh, rusty auto parts. 